This segment is on how to hydrate your fascia, how to get it to move in a way that feels good and healthy. Let's think about first what it looks like if you sit all day at a desk and your head is forward so you can see your screen. What happens when you have this constant pressure in your back, we'll call it a static chronic pressure. That static chronic pressure is going to create a really tight fibrous fascia in your back. A lot of collagen gets thrown down by the fibroblasts and you get tightness between your shoulder blades, in your neck, your lower back, your hamstrings. You've seen it before, right? So then let's take a look at this next clip to see what it would look like if you took your dry fascia and tried to just give it a little bit of water, just drink without having movement. And so you grab a glass of water and you drink this is your fascia, and you drink, oops, see, <laughs> and you drink, see, it's not really absorbing much, and then, it, see, the sponge didn't absorb very much, a dry sponge doesn't absorb much when it's still. And so all of this water in here is what you urinate out. You say, I drink water all the time, but I always have to go to the bathroom. Okay, so this is trying to irrigate without proper movement. Now, imagine, that you say, well, you know what, I'm going to move more because the fascia system, let me just show that, hmm, I'll start here, because the fascia system needs movement. So let's see if you can hear this. This is another dry sponge. Do any of you guys ever feel like your tissue might sound a little bit like this? Eesh. This is like going to go play a pickup basketball game and then you tear your Achilles tendon. or going to a yoga class and again your fascia is super tight and you're like I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to go move I'm gonna be a weekend warrior and then you pull a muscle so what would be optimal let's start with movement if you move on and off movement so this was stagnant pressure continuous chronic stagnant pressure on and off movements it's going to be a dynamic pressure. So this dry sponge that didn't absorb before now absorbs. So these dry tissues that didn't absorb before now absorb. And now your body has a little bit more flexibility and movement. It's not all that easy, but it's pretty close. So we see that the fascial system is like a hydraulic system. It needs to be squeezed and released and squeezed and released so that it can help release the toxins into the lymphatic and circulatory system and take in more of the nutrients. Movement and irrigation together. Both of these are going to help hydrate your system. Start with the little movements, then move into something like yoga where you can align your fascial lines. And then maybe move into, shoot, yeah, definitely move into anything else that you love doing. Because those things that you love doing are gonna be some of the biggest de-stressors you can have. Now that we've gone over movement and irrigation, I want to go over the stressors. Nutrition, drink more water, as we already said. Go ahead and add healthy fats, coconut oil, avocados, and take out things that are going to dehydrate, such as sodas, alcohol. I know if you can just it's a compromise. So it's not taking it out completely, right, if it's a part of your life, but finding a compromise. How much can you take it out when you really want to do other things in your life that you love, which require movement and health and well-being? And that's going to go into our next one, which is coffee. You may start with three cups a day, but maybe you can cut it down to one. There are some benefits in coffee, but overall, it does dehydrate the tissue. It also fools us into thinking that we don't need sleep when we absolutely do. And then it gets the adrenals going, which are the fight or flight. And of course, stress changes the pH in our body, which causes more contraction in the tissue. So the action steps for emotional and spiritual, I would say <laughs> a big topic unto itself. One, just take a breath. When you get in the car and you're driving behind someone who's really slow or maybe someone's tailgating you, Take a breath. When you're about to have a really big conversation, take a breath. The second part is gratitude. 
when you get up in the morning, before you even get out of bed, before you look at your iPhone, what are you grateful for? Before you eat, what are you grateful for? These things make a world of difference. And the last one is sleep. I'm sure you've seen it when you get sleep and when you've missed it, what a difference it makes for your mind, but it has a huge impact on your body as well. If you can go to sleep around 10, 10 30, it's optimal for the body because it also has its cycles to follow. So I'm going to leave it off here and, and give you a few little shots of my little man, Arjuna. He's a pro at sleeping, so he'll show you how it's done. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. May you have a resilient, nourishing, life in which you get to do more and more of what you love. Play hard, rest deeply. Namaste. And visit me whenever you want at any training or www.saratc.com. <laughs>